Well, hello everybody. Uh, I had a lot of comments about isn't it too late to plant? You know, isn't it too hot? When I kept showing my seedlings that are just coming up, you know, my basil, my uh, rainbow tomatoes, and my uh, yellow pear tomatoes. You know, I moved those pots on my patio and I uh, <clears throat> decided to try planting the seed again with putting just about two inches of potting soil in the top of those pots and now my seedlings are doing real well since I moved them on the patio. I don't think I'll lose any of them. And they're going to be the plants that I plant pretty soon because they're almost big enough. Now my patty pan and my uh, spaghetti squash seed that came up, they're big enough right now that I can probably transplant them. I think I've got spaghetti squash in that bunch. I think I mixed the seeds up and I've got patty pan and uh, spaghetti squash. I'll have to wait till I uh, transplant them and they start producing fruit to know for sure. <clears throat> but I know for sure I've got patty pan in there. But no, it's not too late in the summer to plant. You can plant to the end of June. You can plant uh, melons, cantaloupe, corn, cucumbers, beans, I mean, you saw that I replanted some of my foot-long beans out in the uh, side of the archway or the trellis that I've got fixed uh, where the um, sweet peas and bush beans, you know, died off. The heat got to them. So I replanted with the foot-long beans. They seem to go ahead and grow even in this heat. So those are the ones I'm going to stick with for the rest of the summer. I'm going to just keep my uh, foot-long beans growing because they produce and grow right on through the heat, as long as you keep them watered. So that's what I'm gonna do. You can still plant beets and carrots. Like if you're growing beets and carrots right now, you can replant now for succession planting, you know, to keep your harvest going till the end of the summer. So, you know, there's a lot of things that you can still plant right on through the end of June. Uh, and then later, you know, you've got your fall uh, crop that you can plant. But yeah, I mean, there's no problem with doing that. I don't know why you think you can only plant in the spring and when that's gone, you can't plant anymore. But yes, you can. I mean, you can succession plant throughout your whole summer garden. You know, when your uh, cantaloupes and your melons and cucumbers and stuff like that start producing, go ahead and plant, start more, more seedlings and let them start growing so when that first vine slows down in production, you'll have the new plant coming up that will start giving you a harvest off of. So keep your plant, your garden go, growing. Don't just stop because you think it's too late to plant. If I can keep mine alive, I mean, I'll be doing good in this heat with my water restrictions, but uh, I've even gotten comments on that, you know, about can I get water from the lake or can I do this or can I do that? Well, yes, I can, but that's a lot of work, transplant, uh, porting water in buckets or containers from the lake up to my house. I've got already about 100 gallons of compost tea stored in my containers, in my 5-gallon buckets and my 22 uh, containers, 22-gallon containers that I've got. So I water once a week with my compost tea. And then the other day that I'm allowed to water with the tap water, the city water, I water with that. And that's usually on a Monday or whatever day I can get it watered. I do also fill up my compost tea buckets on that day, which I'm allowed to do. Um, I keep that water stored so on in the middle of the week, you know, when my plants really need water again, I can go ahead and dip the water out of my five gallon buckets and my 22 gallon containers and go ahead and water my plants that one day with that water. So, and that's fertilizer, plant food for my plants, which they need that anyway. So that's what I'm doing. So don't think just because I have a water restriction that I'm not trying to keep my plants watered because I am. I water on my one day with the city water water that I'm paying for, 
And the other day, halfway through the week, I, I water with uh, compost tea. So, so far, it's keeping my plants alive. It's the bugs that are killing them. I mean, I've lost several squash plants already and a, my pumpkin plant because of the bugs. You know, the, the squash borers, the bugs, all that kind of stuff. Because some of those plants I did not get the insecticide to in time. So it killed my plants. I mean, they just flopped over and, and just, they're gone. I mean, sometimes if you just break off the top of that plant, leave your root base and that one stem coming out of the ground, if you keep it watered, you might get another plant from it. I'm already getting another plant from one of mine because I did that. I just broke the top of it off and composted the, the, the plant, the dead plant, and I've kept the, the bucket watered and I've got a new squash plant coming up from the roots. So you can do that as well. Don't just pull the whole plant up just because the plant flopped over and you know the bug got to it. Just leave the base of the plant there with the roots. Keep it watered and you'll probably get another plant coming up. So you don't have to replant that. Just keep it watered so it'll grow and start producing again for you. Anyway, that's what I'm doing. You can choose to do whichever way you want to. I'm not telling you you got to do it my way because you don't. I mean, you can do whatever you think is best for your garden. Like, you know, my cucumbers, I knew they needed shade in the hottest part of the day. So I fixed shade for them. I put up shade cloth over the top of my plants. What I can, you know, I can't cover all of them, but I, I covered most of them with the, the canopy top, with other sh smaller shade cloths that I was able to put up. A lot of my plants are shaded from that really extreme hot afternoon sun. I wanted them to get the morning sun, which it can get pretty hot, but after 12 noon, it gets extremely hot here in Texas. That's the time you don't want to be out in the sun unless you're at the lake. <coughs> So, that's what I'm doing, and you know, like I said, I'm not telling you, you've got to do what I do. Do what's best that you think is for your garden. I would love to be able to pipe water from the lake and plant my garden, I mean, water my garden with it. I mean, a lot of people that live on the lake bank, they do exactly that. They pump water out of the lake to keep their yards watered, their bushes watered, anything they've got planted watered. That way they don't have to pay a high water bill. They do pay some kind of a usage fee, I think it's once a year, for the right or the privilege to be able to pump water out of the lake. But it doesn't go against their water bill when they do that. Me, unfortunately, I'm up on top of the hill. You know, I'm probably, I don't know, I mean, it's so windy and curvy, you can't really judge unless you set your uh, your mileage on your car to where it will record the mileage that you're going, you know, the distance. I haven't done that, so I don't know exactly <clears throat> how long it is, how many miles or what part of a mile it is from my house down to the lake. I know I used to could walk it in about 20 to 30 minutes from my house. And because I'd walk it, for, you know, just for exercise for my back. I'd hang out at the park area in the shade and rest a bit, enjoy the scenery, relax. And then I'd turn around and start walking home, which it's mostly downhill going down there, but then it's uphill coming back. So sometimes I wish it was uphill going and downhill coming back because, you know, you're tired after you walk down there. So, but unfortunately, it's the opposite downhill going uphill coming back but it gives you a good workout and I kept my back strengthened up by doing that for many many years until I've re-injured myself and I don't know if I could even walk down there that distance now <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> my allergies have been bothering me I, my eyes are teary my sinuses are draining so it gets me kind of congested so you have to bear with me but yeah, feel free. 
if uh, you have any questions whatsoever about planning this time of year or succession planning, post it in the comments, let me know, and we'll see if we can't get some answers to it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I've got my plants growing out there. I can take you out there and show you the, the, um, I'll have to undo my camera. Sorry about that. I know I jerked the camera around. Uh, let me get some shoes on. Hold this tripod so I can get my shoes on. And I know the AC is running right now, so it's going to be extremely loud when I go out the door. So you have to bear with me. But, like I said, there is my, um, my basil right there. Look how pretty that looks. I'm going to have so many basil plants. I'm going to be busy dehydrating basil. And there's my rainbow tomatoes. And there's my uh, yellow pear tomatoes. And here's my patty pans. I think all of those are patty pans. I don't know if the uh, spaghetti squash even came up. But that's where we stand with that. And, I, you know, I, they've been drying out quite a bit. That's why the leaves are turning yellow. So I need to get those transplanted pretty soon. And my, uh, my poor uh, celery looks like it's going to be burned up in this container wrapped with this cardboard. I mean, that's the way you do it. But unfortunately, here in Texas, it's too hot. It basically almost cooks your celery. I mean, the one that's not covered yet looks pretty good, but I don't know if I'm going to try putting the cardboard on that or not because it just gets too hot on it. Or maybe I need to move it in the shade where it's in the shade all day. Uh, we'll see. I'll try it either way. I might move, uh, move it and see what happens with it. But see, those were watered with my compost tea last night, and the heat has just got them drooped down. It doesn't mean they're dying, it just means that that sun is too hot on them. Where well, those roses love it, I mean. <laughs> and I don't know if this uh, zucchini's gonna make it. I've left it here, I've put plenty of that insecticide on it. But this sun is just too hot. And I just don't have a way of uh, shading this section over here. But it perks back up in the afternoon when the, I mean, later, you know, when the sun is coming from the opposite direction, it's in the shade, and then the leaves perk back up. Now, this one I don't know about. I've left the basic stem to see if I'll get new growth out of it. I don't know if I will, but we'll see. And if I need to, I will plant some of my uh, basil or my pear tomatoes or patty pan squash or something else there. And see how that's drooped down. But it's got plenty, I mean, I gave it water last night. It was perked up, it's just the hot sun. Later this evening, it will perk back up. Even my poor cabbage, look. It's so hot, it's almost cooking the cabbage leaf. I mean, it's terrible. Almost cooking those leaves. And this poor stuff is drooped down. Look at the catnip. <laughs> First time I've ever grown catnip. And I don't like this vine that comes up through here. It's pretty when it blooms, but it just, it will take over your plants. It wraps around them. <laughs> I mean, look at that. 
I think I'm showing you. I don't know what I'm showing you here. But it just wraps around it. I'll have to come back out here later when I don't have the camera in my hand and get that off of it. I don't know if I'm able to do it here now. Hold on just a sec. I might be able to. I don't know. This tripod will fall over if I put it down. So I'll just have to wait till later. <laughs> Sorry about moving the camera the way I did. But I've got melons down in there, see? I've got a big melon started in there. And my little squash fell off. See how the bugs got to the top of it and it just fell off the vine? But evidently they had already gotten to it before I uh, put the insecticide to it. So that poor squash gave way. And this poor melon vine is given, given in to the bugs, I guess. Because I watered this yesterday, last night. Or well, before dark with compost tea watered all this with compost tea last night so it's not dried out but the sun is just too hot on it the sun is too hot on these uh, oriental cucumbers too this vine I did pick two little cucumbers off of it I haven't got any more but it does get shade in the afternoon but it, it gets this hot morning sun and unfortunately, the sun comes from over this direction. So in the afternoon, it does get sun on the corner of this tote, which I don't like. I wished I'd have uh, had some kind of a shade cloth I could put up here, which I may come up with one, see what I can do, because I may replant something else here. But see, I got a winter squash right there. I mean, they're wanting to produce, if it wasn't for this heat and the water rationing, I'd be able to have a garden. I mean, the heat's bad enough, but then when you, you have a water rationing like we do, and you're limited to what you can water your plants, they just will not survive. And I don't know why this plant here died i don't know it's, it's dying i don't know if it's going to completely die I'm trying to find the base of it because i've got several in here and the whole thing may not be dead it may be just that one section because that's what it looks like just one section of it but see how they're wilted and they got water they got compost tea last night and they were all perked up, looked good, but now it's just too hot on them. That watermelon still looks good. And see, this is what I'm talking about. I can't tell what I'm showing you here. Let me get, I'm putting a shadow on it and I don't want to do that. But this is a winter squash. See the new growth coming out from the stem? The wine borer or the squash borers or the bugs or whatever you call them got to that squash plant, that winter squash. It killed the top of the plant, so I broke it off. I left the stem and the roots in the dirt, and now it's growing me a new plant. So hopefully if that one will survive, I don't have to replant there. It's growing a new plant on its own. And I'm hoping this one will do the same thing. Because this doesn't look good. I mean, it's still alive, but it's just not getting enough water. And like I said, I put compost tea to everything last night. And I water this every time I water anything else. But 
in this hot sun, it just is not going to do good. Even my winter squash here, look how they're flopped down. And they're under the shade cloth. And they got water last night. So later today, you know, after that hot sun is the other direction, they'll perk back up and they'll look good again. But right now they don't look good. Just like this squash plant. It's producing more squash in there. This one looks good. I, I wished all of them would look that good. And like these potatoes, I'm going to go ahead and replant something else in here too. I'm going to pull the potato plants out. And if there's no potatoes there, I'm going to take the plant itself, break it apart, put it under the dirt, and then I'm going to plant right on top of it. Because that potato plant will go to uh, plant food for my plants. And see the pepper plant? It's producing, you know, peppers. But it is wilting down just like everything else. And that one's producing a little... Can't tell if I'm showing it to you. <laughs> it's got a little winter squash right there. But they're just, they're struggling in this hot, these hot temperatures. And look at there, there's one up here. So I'm going to be struggling to keep these alive for the next few weeks. If we got like 104, 105, 106 temperatures for the rest of this week. Even my cucumbers, look at this, how they're wilted. Later this afternoon. Excuse me. Later this afternoon, they will perk up, though. And look at that. It was producing a squash. But look what's happened. Just look what's happened to my plant. The squash board just cut the plant off. Just cut it off at the, the stem. So that one had too much in, too many, uh, too many of those squash borers in it for it to survive or do anything. It just cut it off. So things like that will happen. I just hope it don't do the rest of my stuff that way. Because I did put out, uh, I did put out my insecticide. see this one here in the shade is looking real good this one's looking good and it's starting to produce so I need to come out here and get some other shade cloth up maybe hook one to this and put it around over here or put it over this this right here hook one from here to the string there or maybe even over to there to try to shade it but I'll have to get another shade cloth I don't have anymore so that's where I stand and see the tape gets so hot even this uh, duct tape which is supposed to be so strong literally it's so hot that the glue on that tape melts it literally melts and it slides right off and it comes loose so I'm gonna have to come up with another way to secure that I've been tying string on it that's what I'm gonna have to do to that one too and see this is doing the same thing try to keep these runners going back in here under the shade cloth and not coming out here out here in the sunshine. Look at this. It's always coming where it's not supposed to. <laughs> Get them going back the other way. But yeah, I'll have to come out here and see. This tape literally just melts. And it comes apart. And that was shading that plant. So...
So yeah, to grow anything here, you gotta have some shade cloth. And my Swiss chard, it's wilted down right now, but it'll pop back up later this evening. But that's the dilemma I have right now, is just trying to keep them alive. And like I said, I watered late yesterday evening with compost tea. So they had water and they looked good early this morning, but now that heat is so hot that it's hard for anything to you know, to survive out here. I can't even talk, y'all. I'm getting tongue-tied. So, one suggestion I might have is if you can't shade it, wait and plant a fall garden or, you know, plant it at a different time of the year when it's a little cooler. Right now, Texas, it's just too hot for anything to grow, basically. My whole garden suffers with this 106 degree temperature. But you can see if it hadn't gotten so hot, I'd have had a beautiful garden. Look at all those tomatoes on there. That's one of those tiny Tims. Look how small that plant is, but it's just covered in tomatoes. And this one is too. It's just starting to put out some tomatoes. So, you can grow here. It's just work. Just picked a okra. <laughs> it is work. But you do need the shade, because see how much better this side is doing? It's under the shade of the trees. It's get, it gets filtered sun. So most of that looks pretty good. It's everything that's out in the sun that is just suffering. So. We live and learn by, you know, the things we're doing, so. And see the tomato plants over here look pretty good. I mean, look at all the tomatoes on them. But it's under partial shade. It'll get some of that hot afternoon sun, which I probably should move it back away. Right along with these tomato plants over here, they're going to get, they're shaded a lot in the morning. Late in the evening, they're shaded a little bit, but then they get some of that hot midday sun, which they don't like. I mean, that looks beautiful early in the morning or late in the evening, but right now it looks like it's going to die. <laughs> Look at that. And I don't know what the difference in the tomato plants are. Picked another okra. Looks like I need to stake this up some more before it breaks off. This one too needs to be secured a little bit better before it bends over and breaks off. Yeah, but I think next time I plant, I'm going to put more stuff under the shade, under the shade tree. There's a little buddy. Hey, little buddy. What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? Trying to find a cool spot. You got a sticker in your ear. Where have you been? You got a sticker in your ear. <laughs> You want to go around to the back door with me and we'll get you some food? You, you ready for mid-afternoon snack? Huh? Even my beets are wilting. Look. <laughs> I mean, a lot of it's going to survive this heat. Some of it won't.
I'm gonna go around to this other door and yeah, my poor squash. Look, <laughs> it's suffering, y'all. I got to get some more shade up out here somehow. I'm going to go in right now and get little buddy a bowl of food. Look at him. <laughs> he just darts right in. He knows what I'm going to do. He knows I'm going to get him some food. You want to eat in here? Huh? You want to eat here at the door? It's a little too hot outside. Whew. No longer than I've been out there. I'm sweating. I'm totally, I have sweat dripping off of me. Oh, Lordy. Turn it down so you can watch little buddy eat while I put my hair back up. My hair fell down walking around out there. I'm covered in sweat. Whew. I tell you, you can't handle it out there right now. Unless you just take the water hose and turn it on yourself. <laughs> This is definitely too hot. Yeah, there's another, there's a stray cat out there, a black tabby, or black and gray tabby. And uh, I've never seen that cat before. I don't know if somebody put him out or what's going on. But I can't feed all the neighborhood cats. And they'll come and take food away from little buddy so I started letting him come in the house long enough to eat and I leave him a bowl of water out on the porch so if he gets thirsty during the day he does have water he came in just a little while last night stayed in for about 30 minutes he laid down on the cool floor and cooled his belly off and not much later he was ready to go back out so, you know, I'm not trying to hold him up. I'll, I'll let him go, let him go do whatever he wants because I know he actually belongs to someone else. But he's kind of adopted me as his second parent, I guess. <laughs> he got a little hungry. Everybody asks me every once in a while, where's little buddy? Is the little buddy still around? Yes, he's still around, but I can't judge when he's going to be here and when he's not. He come, kind of comes and goes as he pleases. And I got my flip-flops at the door. Whew, I got to sit here and get me a something to drink, man. It's, I got sweat going off my nose. <laughs> oh, Lord, it's hot out there. And like I said, I need to get out there and tie up some more tomato plants before they fall over and break. But I didn't have any yarn with me out there to tie them with, so I'll have to go back out there later with some yarn and tie them up. But yeah, this is the hottest time of day. It's probably 106 degrees out there right now. And it being 106, you, you know those plants are hot. You better go finish eating, little buddy. I think he's going to end up laying with his belly down on the floor to cool off. Yeah, what did I say? Look at here. That floor's cool where the, because the duck runs right under him, comes out up there. So that section of the floor is pretty cool. It's gonna try to see what the temperature is right now.
Yeah, if you need to sweat, don't go to a sauna. Just step outside if you're in Texas. It's 104 right now, so it's not even up to the highest point yet because it's going to get to 106 today for the high, and it's 104. with only 15% chance of rain. And it's going to be 80 degrees tonight. So, I remember the one summer I lived here. That was after I was divorced. It was, I think it was after, yeah, it was after my kids moved out and was married and had their own home and my AC unit went out it wasn't my central air it was my window unit I didn't have the money to buy a new one I didn't have the money to fix it so I spent a whole summer with no AC in this heat in this Texas heat now you can imagine because I live in a mobile home it gets at least 10 degrees hotter inside your mobile home than it is outside that's why my central air is running constantly during the day. So, I tried everything. I'd even take my lounge chair, put it out on the sidewalk at night. Because it was cool outside. But the inside of the house had already heated up. So, you couldn't sleep. You couldn't get comfortable. You were sweating. So, I'd take my lounge chair, take it outside lay down and I could have fell asleep I could have slept outside but the mosquitoes were eating me alive so I had to come in and I just feel yucky when I'm all sprayed down with bug spray to keep them off of me didn't have any that first night I tried it so I came in and I suffered I sweated and sweated my bed was wet with sweat well after that I realized well hey I'm going to get an ice pack, wrap it in a towel, put it on my pillow behind my neck, and cool down. So I did that. And you know what? Without even thinking I was going to be able to, I fell asleep that night. I felt refreshed the next morning because it cooled my whole body temperature down. So after that, every single night when I went to bed, I'd fix that ice pack, wrapped in a towel, put it behind my neck, on my pillow, and laid on it. And would go right off to sleep every night. So I did that the rest of the whole summer. And then finally, I was able to replace the AC unit, the window unit. But it was with a small unit. It didn't work very long. And then I got a repairman out here to fix it. And he fixed it, but he put in a compressor that was too small. So you could only run it on low, which would not even cool the kitchen off. If you turned it up on medium or high, after about 15 minutes, the whole thing froze up. So I was disgusted with it. Finally, I cashed in uh, some uh, stock that I had in Walmart when I bought, worked there. And I bought a central air unit and had it installed. Thank goodness this old, you, I mean, this old mobile home, even though it's old, it did have vents and duct system run you know, for the heat. So they just tapped into that. So I heat and cool through that same duct system now. And since I put in the central air, it's so much better to cool this house. You need, I mean, you cannot live in Texas without AC. Not unless you're living out in the yard at night, you can't. Even at 80 degrees, that's hot, but you can go to sleep at 80 degrees. You can if it's 120, which that's probably what it got up to in this house most of the time. So, yeah, little buddy's not a fool. He knows where to go to get cooled off. So don't y'all worry about little buddy. He knows he'll either come here or he, he'll go to his own home or he'll go to somebody else's house that'll let him in and let him cool off.
Yeah, most of the neighbors know know him now, and some of them look after him like I do. Some of them don't. Some of them just think he's a stray cat, and they don't want him around. But he's a sweetheart. And as long as he comes to my house, he'll get food and water if he needs it. And if he wants to come in like he's doing right now and cool off for a few minutes, I'll let him do that. Because I know it's, it's too hot for anything outside right now. I mean, you might could bear it a little bit if you're in the shade and if you got water close by that you can wet down with. But... That sun? Oh no, you don't want to be in that sun right now. You'll cook. I'm about to die and I was just out there for a few minutes. Well, I was hoping this summer was going to be better on my garden. I wasn't counting on this 106 degree temperatures hitting us especially when we're still under water restrictions. So. Anyway, I'm going to do the best I can with my garden to keep what I can alive of it. Transplant some of my seedlings and see what happens. But like I said, the pots that I can, I'm going to put in the, under the trees where it's shaded most of the time. Or they do get filtered sun through the, through the limbs and the trees and the leaves and stuff. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give them some shade and see how they do. Especially the patty pan squash and all that. So. Look at him. He's going to take him a nap since he's cooling off. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> Oh, I'm sweating. I'm, I'm melting, y'all. I know I drink gallons of lemonade and water every day. So I think with that, me and little buddy, or little buddy and I, will wish you a good day. Have a great Sunday. Please like, share, and subscribe to my videos. I'm counting on all these new subscribers coming in. I need them. So have a blessed Sunday. And I will see you on, you and uh, me and little buddy both will see you on my next video. Bye now.